Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So we're looking at DCS in the mission editor, how to create a mission that allows us to pick up troops, pick up vehicles, technically pick up anything. We could even pick up ships and probably buildings if we wanted to. But, you know, keeping it roughly realistic, we're going to pick up troops, we're going to pick up vehicles in a helicopter, we're going to move them to somewhere else. Uh, we can move them anywhere in the map, but I'm just going to show you moving them locally a few hundred feet just to make it a quick video. And the point of making this video is that, well, first of all, I should say to do this stuff, to do logistics properly or the best way of doing logistics like this is to use external Lua scripting. There are people out there in the forum that very kindly created open Lua script files like CLTD, like MIST, M-I-S-T. So MIST would be uh, mission scripting tools, CLTD would be what complete transport logistics deployment I think and they are open they're freely available on the ED website for you to use and give you more flexibility for creating missions for any kind of logistics than you can create from within purely the DS DCS engine itself but today we're going to look at yes you can do that but instead we're going to look at doing it just within the DCS mission editor engine itself without any external scripting. Let's go into the mission editor. So this is how we can do it if you don't want to use external scripting. I'm sure there may be reasons why you want to do it that way. So, okay. So because we're not going to be calling any external scripts, we're just going to purely be using the tools that are available to us in the mission editor. And they're but we can still make a fairly decent mission. We can't make anything as complicated as we could with CTLD or MIST. But um, we can, you know, we can put some basic logic in there that makes it semi-realistic. So we'll start at Batumi, and we're going to keep it as simple as we can. The, the more complicated this gets, the longer it's going to take, and we want to keep it a relatively short video. So we're going to put our helicopter in there. We're going to make him uh, take off from the ground hot. We're going to make him a uh, Huey, because it's my favourite client. And we're going to make his pilot name Cap. Okay. Next, we're going to put some st uh, stuff in to carry. So what we're going to do is move some stuff from here uh, over to here just to make it a short transit. So we're going to put a... Um, uh, what vehicle would a Huey be able to carry? A, a Jeep or something like that, wouldn't it? Um, there we go. Huey might be able to carry that, question mark. No idea. Uh, let's call that... And let's give it the same unit name, uh, Jeep. Now, we have to actually change that ever so slightly. What we have to do is call this Jeep Pickup or something similar. Jeep Pickup. And why you have to do that will become obvious in a bit. What we're going to do is make a carbon copy of him there. Control C, Control V. And here, this carbon copy is going to be called Keep Jeep Drop. Jeep Drop. Let's put our next vehicle in. It's going to be um, a infantry. It's going to be an M1 Grand. And we're going to call him M1 Pickup. M1 Pickup. And we're going to carbon copy him. There. Whoops, that didn't work. Try that again. His unit name's gone funny. That's a bit annoying. Copy him. Put him there. Change his name to Drop. I've got to be careful here. Let me just uh, name him first there, name him second there, and one drop. Okay, and we'll do one more for the fun. We'll put another infantry soldier M4. So this is going to be M4 pickup. I'm not even sure we have to um, change the unit name in here, but I haven't done this for a while, so I'm just going to do it just for safety. Pickup. Control C. Control V. Let's call him drop. And 
drop. Okay. So, we've now got our drops here. What we want to do is put these on late activation so they don't get activated until later on. Okay. I'm going to have a quick check just to make sure everything looks right. All looks good. Okay, everything appears to be spelled correctly. So, at the moment, there's no logic. There's nothing, there's no intelligence behind this. So, we start need to add in the intelligence. So, first, we're going to put our trigger zones in. So, trigger, 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 trigger. There we are. Let's put one in here. Let's put it uh, fairly small so we have to land near to the, uh, the, the guys. So, that is it. And it's called pick up. Trigger. We're also going to have a landing trigger or drop off trigger. So, the one there, ping, relatively small. I better put this somewhere where I can see it better, but we're going to call that drop trigger. Move that somewhere I can remember to put it there, would do. So, got us there. Ping. And now we just need to start associating trigger logic to these triggers to actually start doing intelligent things. So, first of all, we're going to go to the trigger system here. We're going to say if, or we're going to say new, and this uh, trigger will be activated only once. And the condition is our Huey. Uh, so we've got unit is within zone, I think, unit inside zone. So if me, cap, is within the pickup trigger, and we want some extra conditions. So the logic, we want that, but and we have to make sure that we're landed. So and our unit altitude, ADO altitude is lower than, cap is lower than, I'm just going to say 10 feet, should be near enough to being landed, about 5 feet. And unit altitude is, speed is lower than 2 knots, so he's landed and he's still, so... Cap is in the trigger, and cap is altitude is less than 5, and cap speed is less than 2. Then, we're going to do something. And the logic that we want is to add some radio commands to allow us to access those troops. So what we're going to do is add radio item. And we could add it to a group or a coalition. We're just going to add it to everyone, just to make it easy. And what this is going to be called is M4 pick up so this is a radio command to pick up the m4 dude and what this does is when i press this radio command this sets flag one here to value one i could change that or i could change that but that's what it's going to do bearing in mind that all flags will be defaulted to zero now we're going to clone that twice and we're going to give two other radio options we're going to have m1 pickup which is when clicked on going to change flag two to one and then we're going to have uh, Jeep pickup, which is going to ch change the flag 3 to 1, so double check. Radio pickup, radio M4 pickup, radio M1 pickup, radio, uh, radio Jeep pickup. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm going to confirm that's acceptable by closing it off and loading it up back again, and it's all fine. Next, we're going to have some logic to tell us what to do once we've clicked on those radio items, so new. And we're going to say if one of those radio items is clicked, therefore a, tra a trigger will be changed. So if uh, sorry, not trigger, um, flag, I meant to say flag. If flag is equal, if flag 1 is equal to 1, i.e. you've clicked on the collect the M1 guy, sorry, the M4 guy, then we are going to deactivate him, so he disappears, so uh, what is it, group deactivate or unit deactivate, it'll be group deactivate, won't it, in this case, I can't remember if we can do unit deactivate, we probably can. But we're going to do it with a group and we're going to deactivate M4 pickup group. Okay, so that's going to pick up the M4 guy. Next, we're going to duplicate this and we're going to do the same. This one, if flag 2 equals 1, then M1 pickup. And this one here, if flag 3 equals 1, then uh, Jeep pickup disappear so let's double check the logic flag one flag two flag three m4 m1 jeep 
Okay, so that is that done. So what happens now, the logic is now in there so that when we move our chopper to here, we park, we land in this area, we use our radio commands then to pick up whichever tubes we decide to pick up. Uh, the logic inside DCS then will disappear, the correct unit, and will remember in our flag memory which unit is in our helicopter. Then we're going to fly over to here, and then we need to set a new trigger. So what we're going to do is go to triggers again. We're going to duplicate number one, clone, and I didn't mean to clone that. Let's delete that. Blast. What I've done there is I've accidentally deleted uh, the wrong one because I'm a silly billy. So I just got to redo that quickly. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, fixed. Uh, so this is the one I've just duplicated here. So what I want to say now is if we get inside the zone drop trigger and we are altitude less than 5 AGO and speed is less than 2 knot, then I'm not going to do any of this stuff. Uh, what we could actually do out of interest is delete radio items at this point. Let's just see if that's possible. Uh, radio item remove. Uh, name. Oh, blast. I forgot what I've uh, named them, so I'm not going to bother. But it's just showing you you can actually remove old radio items that you don't want available anymore, which is quite cool. Uh, anyway, we're going to go radio item add, and we're going to have drop all uh Cargo. I'm going to drop all transport. It's going to be flag number four. So it's adding a radio option. It's going to be uh, drop all transport and it's going to be flag number four turns to one. And then what we need, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Then what we need is a new trigger here saying if flag. Uh, Four equals one. Then, uh, in fact, if flag equal four equals one, so we've I decided to drop the troops, and uh, flag um, one equals one. So, and we picked up a M four guy. Then we are going to group activate the M one guy drop. Uh, sorry, that's M4, the M4 guy drop. Okay. And then we're going to clone. So we've now got if flag 2 is true, then we're going to drop the M1 guy. And this one, if flag 3 is true, then we're going to drop the Jeep. All right, then I'm going to go test that now. There may be some error in the logic here. That's very normal. So what we do is we'll test it and then we'll debug it. Um, in fact, wouldn't it be cool to add an extra thing if... How about this? To add a little bit of coolness. Let's add another trigger in there. And thank you. Smaller. So if the helicopter enters this new trigger, which is going to be called smoke... So... If if um, unit is in zone, it's going to be me inside smoke trigger. Then we can do smoke on effect. If you can remember how to do it, smoke marker will be on pickup trigger altitude 1 AGL and it will be red so it will tell us to land at the red smoke and we can even have a comment coming out message and at red smoke please with British and let's stay there for 10 seconds okay that's that let's do a save and let's go and fly see what we've done wrong this time so save as um, let's call it transport one. Off we toot. Let's go and get in our Huey. Let's just double check that the pickup troops are there, and they are, and the drop troops are not there, which they're not. All good. Right. Here we go. 
Okay, land at Red Smoke, please. Get within the pickup zone. Hello, boys. And we can decide which ones we're going to take. So what we're going to do now is press the radio menu. And um, we should have the radio options added because we landed in the zone and we're parked. Other. And we're going to pick up the M1, I think. And then we're going to pick up the Jeep. Okay, but I'm not going to take the M4. Off we go. Let's go and park at the... Um, Drop zone. So it's got a basic bit of intelligence here that can determine what's in my helicopter and what's not. Thing. Okay. Uh, we're going to land. We should have a new radio argument added to other. There it is. Drop all transport. And there is the Jeep. There is the M1 guy. And there's no M4 guy because I didn't have one in my belly. So that's down there. So this shows you a basic bit of kind of logic, uh, a, a few test gates in there that can determine how we pick those troops up, which troops we pick up, uh, where we've dropped them, how we drop them, and which troops we've dropped. And you can go in and make that as complicated as you want. You can go in and you can add a delay in there via a flag or something. That, that means it takes so many seconds to load the troops. It takes so many seconds to um, unload the troops and stuff like that. And you can make it as complicated as you want. You can have the troops uh, kind of spawn from the helicopter and then move outwards or, you know, whatever you want. So as ever, the best way of doing this is to use the external Lua scripts, the CTLD, the MIST. But if you don't want to do that, you just want to use the in-game routines, then you can do that in here. And to within a certain amount of complexity, you can um, get that and make that look pretty cool. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that helps and see you later.